You're looking at Superstition Mountain, a barbaric pile of rock 40 miles long by 20 wide. The man is Floyd Buckley. He's going into this 800 square miles of sudden and violent death because he thinks it's just another mountain and because he's greedy for its treasure. Yeah, I said treasure, gold, $20 million worth of precious yellow metal waiting to be found in America's most elusive mine, appropriately named the Lost Dutchman. It's simple to get to, the mountain, I mean. Just drive 36 miles due east from Phoenix, Arizona, and there she is. She looks easy from the outside. Inside, it's like Satan's private art gallery. Sculptured pagan granites unmellowed by time, hidden in terrifying canyons and gorges. But if you'd like to pick up 20 million bucks and figure like Buckley there that a mountain's just a mountain, I'll show you where to look. But before you leave for Arizona, you ought to know that 21 men have been murdered grabbing for that dough. And hundreds more have died in other ways. You see, this is the true story of Superstition Mountain, the biography of a death trap. My name's Barry Storm. I was hurled into this story when I heard that shot. Up till then, I was just an ordinary guy with a reasonable curiosity about the Lost Dutchman mine. A curiosity I wish I'd never been born with. I hurried toward the sound of the report and hoped I'd find a hunter who'd maybe bagged a deer. I found Floyd Buckley, sprawled and dead. His blood, life, and dreams spilling out on the unfriendly ground. When you find a dead man, you're supposed to call the police. I'm a good citizen. I set out to do what you're supposed to do. Fear and panic gave me a boost up over that ledge, and I began to run, not walk, to the nearest exit. Speed no longer meant anything to Buckley, but it did to me. I didn't want to be framed in the crosshairs of a telescopic sight on a high-powered rifle. I'd just gone in to look for gold. I didn't want to find lead from the business end of a killer's gun. It took me three days and 36 miles of tough hiking to put the sheriff from Florence, Arizona into action. Identification bracelet. Wallet. Telegram. Lecturing in Los Angeles, September 30th. <laughs> They're gonna have to get a new speaker. That's all the personal effects. Let's go. Sit down, son. Say your name's Barry Storm. You're from Colorado and you've been here only 10 days. You're no prospector, but you were up there when Buckley got shot. What were you doing in the mountain? Well, I know it sounds kind of bad, but I was following Buckley. You were what? Now, wait a minute. I didn't shoot him. I had a good reason to be up there. My grandfather was Jacob Waltz. Who? Jacob Waltz, the man who owned the Lost Dutchman gold mine. The Dutchman, eh? That goes back to about 1880. He's supposed to have killed quite a few men in his time. That doesn't have anything to do with me. All I know is, when I was a kid, my mom heard about this mine her father was supposed to have found. I always figured someday I'd come down here. So you came down here. Go on. Well, I thought there might still be a buck laying around that had my name on it. First place I went to was a claims office in Phoenix. How do you spell that again? No, Waltz, W-A-L-Z, Jacob Waltz. Well, oh, nobody with that name ever registered a claim here. This record goes clear back to 1870. But there must have been. Well, the lost Dutchman was supposed to be worth a fortune. He wouldn't just leave that money laying around. Maybe he never found a mine. Some people don't believe there ever was a lost Dutchman. Well, then again, some do. News had a story on it just this morning. There. This newspaper item was my first lead. I wanted to meet this guy who said he was going to find my grandfather's mine. Mr. Buckley, if you've got a minute, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about this newspaper story. Certainly. I'm always glad to see the press. If well, you... I, I'm not a reporter. I'm just interested in you being so sure about locating that lost Dutchman. If you've read my books, you'd know I'm hardly the type to go out on a wild goose chase. Well, you got a map. Naturally, I have a map. 
One of the original Peraltas, in fact. Peralta? Yes, you see, the Peralta mine I'm seeking and the Lost Dutchman happen to be one and the same. And it looks like you and I have got something in common. Yes? I happen to be Jacob Walter's grandson. Really? You mean the man who allegedly owned it? Hmm. That's very interesting, I'm sure. I never knew he left a family. I can prove it if I have to. That's why it might be good business to let me come along with you. Now, if you know how to use this man... I not only know how to use it, but I know where the marker is. And I know how to use that, too. But for your information, young man, I never go partners. Excuse me. He really brushed me off. I decided right then to follow him. When his car dropped him off at Apache Junction, I was waiting. I started tailing him then. But Buckley was too sharp. He lost me on the third day. I never caught up with him again. Not until after I heard the shots. 30-30. Entered downward from behind. Hey. This must be the map he was talking about. It was in his wallet. Hey, something's been torn off the top of him. Well, maybe that's the way he got it. Maybe it had directions on it and he tore it off himself. Some fellows memorize directions so that nobody else can use their maps. Well, half the state has got indigestion from eating old maps. <laughs> You've been staying in Phoenix, huh? Your things there? Well, it's some of them. Most everything I own is right on me. I put my bag in the bus depot after I checked out of the hotel. You haven't got a job. You say you're the Dutchman's grandson. You tail a guy you thought was holding out on you. He gets knocked off. Ray, you'd better take him out to the mountain tomorrow. Let him show you just how he spent those three days. No. Walter, you'd better go along with him. How long after the shot before you found him? 10 to 15 minutes, maybe longer. He was still warm. You didn't see anybody else? No. What were your plans if Buckley had found the mine? Well, I don't know exactly, but I wouldn't have shot him. Well, I guess I didn't have any plans. That is, beyond hoping there might be a mine, I might have some legal rights to. Come on, Walter. Let's have a look at the other side of the canyon. What are you looking for now? The Buckley was hit from behind. The killer was somewhere up there with that cliff. You were uh, up over there. That take me off the hook? Mm, maybe. Unless Buckley spun around before he fell. You see, uh, three other guys have been knocked off in this same area ahead of Buckley before you even got here. That's a break in your favor. <laughs> Buckley was the fourth? The fourth in the last two years. All right around here, and all by a 30-30. And if you look in the record book, you'll find out 20 men have died in this mountain since 1880. Well, I'm through. Let's uh, get back to Patchy Junction and some cold beer. I, I was just thinking, this, this all adds up to something. Like what? Four guys murdered, all in the same area, all by a 30-30, all in the shadow of Weaver's Needle. So? Well, the killer thinks he knows where the gold is. When it looked like the others might find it before he did, when they got too close, he knocked them off. So the jackpot must be somewhere as close, near that peak. Buckley, I bet he found it. Found what? The mine? No, the marker. He said he knew where the marker was and how to use it. Come on, I'll show you something. There's your marker. This is what Buckley meant? It's the only marker in this mountain. The rocks hammered in that old Suari cactus indicate three directions, but only the one pointing north leads anywhere, though, to some signs carved in those rocks up there. It's quite a climb. Come on. There they are. What do they mean? Oro is a word for gold. The sunburst means the mine is near. Now this uh, means uh, 50 yards away in the direction the snake is pointing. Now the only trouble is nobody has ever been able to find anything but follow on those signs. Oh, aren't they the real thing? Who knows? Well, who put them there? Hey, you suppose my grandfather? Ah, they're Spanish signs. Supposed to have been cut by the Peraltas. Peraltas? Buckley had a Peralta map. Had the name Manuel on it. Mm -hmm. There were three of them. Brothers, Manuel, Pedro, and Ramo. They were the first to find gold in here a hundred years ago. There's an old Indian legend about them in this mountain, eh, Walter? 
They opened up several of the mines and then left. And then Pedro, the oldest brother, came back with a big expedition. Walter here, who's an Apache himself, has heard from his own people the story of what happened. After many nuisance raids by the Indians, Pedro Peralta decided to hide his gold. He selected the richest and most inaccessible mine of all as his storage place. It was reached through a narrow, twisted, and almost hidden canyon that finally opened onto a tortuous runway. This runway was the only entrance to and the only exit from the fabulous mine located on the thin, precipitous ledge below. While armed men stood guard, Pedro's miners led their animals to the dangerous ledge where the rough ore was separated from that which had been crushed, and the pure gold nuggets were hurriedly poured into sacks for storage in the hidden mine. Pedro sat just inside his mine and noted that he possessed some $20 million worth of gold. But fate had decreed a different kind of fortune for him. Fate and the Apache. <laughs> of all Apache chiefs watched the lightning-like attack. And when every Spaniard was finally killed, he ordered his warriors to close the mine. You see, the Spaniards had defiled a holy place when they came into superstition, because to the Apaches, it was a sacred home of their thunder gods. It wasn't enough to just kill Pedro and his men. All traces of them and their work had to be erased. So the mine was completely closed and hidden. With that accomplished, Cochise and the Apaches felt their thunder gods were avenged and appeased. Every mine was closed so efficiently that they disappeared from view as though they'd never existed. And Pedro's $20 million worth of gold was buried inside the sacred mountain from which it had been taken. That's the legend, as the Apaches have told it for over a hundred years. The Apaches buried all that gold? Just like in Fort Knox. Yeah. <laughs> well, didn't the other brothers, Ramo or Manuel, ever come back? Well, they say Ramo came back, but who knows? You know, I generally charge tourists ten bucks for telling that yarn. <laughs> and that mine where the gold is buried, that's the one my grandfather rediscovered. Huh? So they say. Well, let's push it along. Hey, hey, Ray, wait a minute. Yep. Do I have to go out with you? I'd sort of like to stay in here a while longer. Ah, oh, getting you too, huh? Gold happy. <laughs> You know, every tourist I tell that yarn to has to stay a little while longer, all trying to figure out them signs. Yeah, I'm something more than a tourist. I've got a family interest in that mine. Mm. Well, it's all right as me. I'll leave you some grub. But remember, there's a killer loose in here. I'd hate to see you end up like Buckley. Coven's reminder about Buckley took some of the excitement out of me, but only for a minute. The deputy could think I was a fool if he wanted to, but I was determined to try my luck at putting the golden jigsaw together. For the next five days, I beat my brains out trying to make the Spanish treasure signs pay off. Fifty yards, they said. I went fifty yards in every direction, but straight up. If I'd had wings, I'd have tried that. I began to realize that this was no ordinary puzzle. I finally thought that maybe if I went over every foot of the area where the four men had been murdered, I might find something. How close I came, I didn't learn till a lot later. I didn't know I was being stalked, that for a moment I was a bullseye, a sitting duck, number five on the list. I just kept going, dreaming about being a millionaire. The only thing I learned was that the guy who'd murdered Buckley wasn't the only killer loose in superstition. He 
you don't relax right away. You sort of coast to a stop after a shock like that. I was almost afraid to look at my leg. I was sure he'd gotten me. He hadn't, but he came awful close. I finally started to breathe again and shook off the shroud of fear the rattler had thrown over me. I picked up my pack and started to get up. That's when I found it, buried in the ground. When I pulled rocks loose to throw at the snake, I'd uncovered a part of a rifle. Excitedly, I dug the rest of it out of the gravel. I didn't have any idea of what kind it was, but as I held it in my hands, I wanted to believe it had been my grandfather's, because if it was, it could mean I was close to the lost mine, to the gold. Call it fate, luck, it doesn't matter. But a rattlesnake that had tried to kill me had led me to this old weapon. At that moment, it seemed I could actually feel the presence of Jacob Waltz in the unfriendly canyon. Suddenly, it was more important to find out about this gun than it was to keep on searching for the mine. So I decided to leave the mountain and bring the gun to you. But you know what kind it is? Looks like a sharps. But we're interested in a 30-30. Yeah. Yeah, but if it is old enough, it could have been my grandfather's, couldn't it? I told you he had the bug. <laughs> Let me see it. I think I got a sharps here. A sharps. Breech loader. 45-90 caliber. Lots of them around here in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. That one killed a sheriff in 1875. Yeah. You know, finding this where I did, I, I sort of thought I might be near his mine. Well, that is, if it was his gun. I never heard anybody say what kind of a weapon Walsh used. If it's so important for you to find out, you might try the Pioneer's home. Home. Yeah, it's in Phoenix, old folks' place. One of those old timers might be able to tell you about this. And your grandfather, too. Yeah, they got nothing else to do up there but talk. Thanks, I think I'll pay him a visit. Mrs. Bannister might be able to help you. She spent her childhood in Florence Junction. She isn't easy to talk to. You promise not to upset her. Oh, I won't. Martha, this is Mr. Storm. He wants to ask you a few questions. You know, I don't like being bothered. You've got no right to bring people pestering me. It's about my grandfather. He lived here around 1886. Oh, and you're a lot of people who lived here. What was his name? Waltz. Jacob Waltz. I won't talk about him. Jacob Walsh was a, a mean, wicked man. I, 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 and if you're his grandson, you're probably just like him. Did I hear you mention Jake Walls? <laughs> he was a real sidewinder, that man. What do you want to know about him? I'll be glad to tell you. You're always poking your nose in where you ain't wanted, Bill Biggs. He didn't ask you. My name's Barry Storm. You see, Waltz was my... Checking up on old Jake, eh? Well, you've come to the right place, young fella. <laughs> now, if you want my opinion, I do You don't want anything from you. I'm the one who knows all about Jacob Waltz. See, I found this gun. You, I... you like guns, don't you? You probably go around scaring people with them just like he did to me. When I was a girl in Florence Junction, he, he frightened me. What you doing, mister? Huh? What you doing? Why are you playing with that? Is that gun yours? It's brand new, ain't it? Ain't it, mister? Come here. You want to have some fun? Huh? <laughs> Put your finger in there. Pull. Oh, no, no. pull harder. <laughs> I got buyers for two of our burros. Mexican fella and his partner. Well, here's your burros. You got them at a good price, too. Wanna have a look for that lost Spanish gold? <laughs> Guess right, didn't I? Everybody looks for it, but nobody ever finds it. <laughs> I figure them engines hit it. Too good to hit it. <laughs> what do you mean the engines hit it? That gold is hid forever. Want to sell back them burros? I'll give you half what you paid for them. <laughs> well, maybe they ain't hit it good enough. Hey, Peralta? <laughs> Silencio. Keep your mouth shut.
Game of Peralt don't mean anything to you, Dutchie. Be a dirty shame if they was to stumble onto something we wasn't there to see what it was. Yeah. making camp for the night. Yeah, it's about time. The fellers must be part mountain goat the way they've been hightailing. Go start a fire down in the gully there. Don't make any smoke. I'll go and load the burro. Yeah, as soon as I play myself a game. <laughs> I think you're right about them. They haven't even stopped to pan one of the streams. They know where they're going, all right. Sure they know where they're going. You ought to see the way that Mexican jumped down the other fellow's throat when he started to talk. You're dang right they know where they're going. <laughs> Say, you're lucky I let you in on this. Yeah. You go down and build a fire. Don't make any smoke. <laughs> Turn up the ace of spades, I can win this game. Well, it could be the ace of spades. <laughs> yeah, I won that game. Well, that was the settingest two fellers I ever seen. Suppose they sleep setting up that way. Fire's going out. Darn ace of spades never shows up when I need it most. Eats me every dang game. Come on! They tricked us. Them shat bellied hornswogglers made us think they were sitting here. They won't get away. We can pick up a trail. I figure they went this way. What do you think? Well, sure, sure, Dutchie. Sure. All right, go get the burrow. Go on. The two who were following us. I wonder if they follow our trail. Nah, we'd have seen them two days before if they had. Are you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> I found the marker and the signs. We won't have long to wait for the next sign now. See? The moon is just rising. I never heard of finding a mine by the light of the moon. It is 38 years to the day that my brothers and I were here. You won't forget our agreement. Huh? I am a Mexican. I cannot file a claim for this mine. Oh, I won't forget. I file a claim as an American citizen and we go 50-50. We must get to the ledge below. Nothing here. It's been many years, but I'm sure this is the place. Maybe the old burr seller's right. Maybe the engines did cover it up. We dig here. My old legs are killing me. 
getting too old to be traipsing around these mountains. When we go back, let's go to Phoenix instead of away at Florence Junction. What do you say, Dougie? You've never been to Phoenix, have you? It's a real live town. <laughs> I remember once I was there. of it already mine. We've got a storehouse. <laughs> I tell you, it's the richest gold all you ever seen. Come on. Joe, what is it? Well, I found gold in superstition, Mrs. Thomas. Brung back nuggets as big as your fist. close to 40,000 a ton. 40,000 a ton? That's bigger than the California strike. How much? 40,000 a ton! Bonanza! 40, can you imagine? Go out and buy up every borough in town and hurry. Ton? How much? 40,000. 40,000? It's over 40,000. It's way over 40,000. Nearly 50,000. How much for what I brought in? It uh, might less than 300 pounds. I'll give you 5,000 for it. It's worth six. Refined, maybe. As it is, no. Let's see. Just stop crowding, will you? All right. All right, fine. What's your name? I have to have your name in this receipt. Walsh, Jacob Walsh. What's his name? He said his name was Jacob Walsh. Who is he? Jacob Walsh. Must be a Dutchman. Or a German. Yeah, that's what I said, a Dutchman. Sign it. <clears throat> it's a receipt stating I paid you $5,000 for 297 and a half pounds of gold ore. You ain't paid me yet. I will. You've got to sign it. It's the law.
Is he signing his name? Is he signing his name? I don't know. He isn't even signing his name. He can't even write his own name. He can't read nor write. How do you like that, Julia? A stupid foreigner that can't even read or write finds a million-dollar gold mine. And you get $11 a week clerking in a hardware store. You and your high school diploma. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and 10 50s makes 5,000. You're sure going to file a claim, ain't you? I'd like to talk to you about a deal you might find interesting. Hey, whereabouts is it, Strikes? Hey, you're going to file a claim, mister. Go ahead. Hey. Boy, you really struck a quench, huh? I'll bet that ore's worth more than Parson Shed. That boy has got some trouble. He got 5,000 just like a shed. Where are you? Get off my bed. How many times must I tell you to stay out of my room unless you're invited? I've got a right to lie on your bed. I'm your husband. Come into the other room. I want to talk to you. Talk to me in here. Julia! That's right, Pete. Come in. All right. What do you want? Sit down. A man named Jacob Walsh has just arrived in town. I want to meet him. Why? He's discovered gold. What do you want to meet him for? I've got a right to know. Really? Well, I have a right to some things, too. Like being sick and tired of running a bakery. Now, wait a minute, You've Julia. had four years to do something about getting me out of here, Pete. I've had bad luck. I'm doing the best I can. Yes, you've done very well. Have you been able to keep a job? Have you replaced our savings? You so cleverly invested in grazing land no animal could live on. Have you, Pete? That wasn't my fault. I got swindled. No. I got swindled. So now you're going to bring that man here. Oh, no, I won't, Julia. Yes, you will. Still that unsolved murder in Milwaukee. All right. Good. Of course, he's not to know that I'm married to you. But you are married to me. Yes, but he's not to know. You understand, Pete. What do you want of him? I'm not sure yet. But I am sure I'm not going to stay here and dry up like the other women in this filthy town. Look, I'll get a job driving the stage to Tucson or, or maybe mining up in yes, Goldfield. Yes, yes. He's at Luke's Saloon now. Buying drinks. Or whatever he wants. Just see that I meet him, Pete. Some money on the floor. if I wanted to. Where'd you strike it rich, Nutsy? Come on, tell us. You want to hear about the mine, huh? Is there much of this high-grade ore, Waltz? That, that's nothing. Why, that's just some of the loose stuff I picked up on the outside. Of the mine. Hey, Waltz, you mean on the outside? Yeah. On the inside of the mine, there's a vein of gold as thick as... Uh, as thick as her waist. Where is it? Come on, tell us. All right, I'll tell you. 
Sergeant. From the mine, you can see the old military trail. Yeah. Then it is in superstition. Yeah. But from the trail, you can't see the mine. Oh. You've been teasing and hosting us around all night, Walls. Now you tell us where you struck it, Rich, or shut up. That's right. Put up or shut up. That's telling you. Yeah, it's about time somebody told him off. Low heart. Maybe I'll file a claim. What? Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd know right where to look. That'd make it easy for you. Well, come on up and try to find it. I'll be waiting for you. I'll give you a real welcome. <laughs> That's telling them, Walsh. How about buying you a drink? He told you before he can buy his own drinks. Come on, honey. Are you really a Dutchman, honey? I bet Elsie was a German. Was I right? In the Deutsch? What, honey? Bring me a drink. Not enough of that Dutchman tonight. I bet you get awful lonesome up in the mountains all alone. It ain't natural for a man to be by himself all the time, honey. Mm. You go back to your mind, maybe you ought to take a little company. Maybe like taking Lucille with you. Ow! You're just like all the rest. All you want is my gold. That's all any of you want. I don't want none of your gold, mister. Not tonight. Now get out of my place. You stay! Stop it, Lucille. You heard me. Get out. All right. You won't let me stay in, then I won't let you come out. He's bluffing. Relax, boss. Another half minute, he'll fall on his face. <laughs> Here, you drunken. Disappeared. Shh, yeah. not so loud, Pete. I tried to bring him He's home. He's inside now, conscious, passed out here on the street. Now, please don't come back until I send for you. Julia. Please. Good night. Morning. How do you feel now? Get some coffee, a fresh room. Uh, you may wash up in there.
How did I get here? Oh, you were lying in the doorway of my shop. You were quite sick. I was drunk last night. Either way, I still couldn't leave you there. Why? Why? Because yeah. I felt sorry for you. What other reasons are there? How much do I owe you? Oh, me? Yeah, yeah. Why, nothing. Very glad you're feeling better now. My name is Jacob Walsh. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Walsh. I'm Julia Thomas. You do not know who I am. No, should I? Everybody in town is talking about me. Oh, why? I found a bonanza. What? Gold. I found the richest gold mine in the world. Oh, well, that's nice. Uh, would you like some more coffee? You have no interest. Should I have? Well, Mr. Walls, I don't know anything about gold mines. I just know about baking and trying to run my little shop. Now, if you'll excuse me, I do have to get the baking done. You don't even want to know where my mine is. I wouldn't know a gold mine if I fell into one. <laughs> I'm very much obliged to you. You're welcome. Don't Peter Petersham. Sind Sie Deutsch? Ja. Meine Mutter war Deutsch. Ja? Ja. May I call upon you sometime? Well, I... This evening. All right, if you wish. Excuse me. Yeah. Good morning, Mrs. Butler. How much are them? Twenty cents a dozen are dollars. Outrageous. And them? Same. You ought to be ashamed charging such prices. But, Mrs. Butler, they're the lowest in Ever town. Ever since that gold strike, everybody's charging four times what things is worth, and you ain't no different. Criminals, all of you. Give me half a dozen of them. Very well. The freshest ones, mind you. All this stuff's been sold. What? It belongs to me. Well, you can't do anything. And you like get that. out. You can't talk to me. You get out. I won't stop. You get out and you stay out. Hervals. Shouldn't have done that. She was one of my best customers. You let people talk to you that way. Well, when a woman has to support herself, it's necessary to endure many unpleasant things. I buy everything. Well, really, there's no... It's for sale. Yes, but... All right, I buy everything. You wrap it up, I take it with me. Everything. Hmm, here, yeah. You like cookies? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All of them? Yeah. Won't you sit down? <clears throat> I'm much obliged to you for taking me in last night. I... Oh, it was nothing at all. I'm much obliged to you. Why? For the biggest day's business I've had since I came to Phoenix. <laughs> I've sold out. 
Would you like to see the album? Yes, I, I, I mean, I would. This is my mother, my father. He died when I was seven. That was after they came from Germany. Uh -huh. Oh, dear, not that one. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, I, I keep meaning to take it out of there. It's so embarrassing. Yeah, you grew up fine. Uh -huh. oh, well, let me see. I was uh, born and raised in Milwaukee. This is the house we lived in. And, uh... This is my mother's uncle. He's in Dresden now. And this is... Uh... When did you come here? Oh, about four years ago. Uh, uh, why? Hmm. Why did you come here? Well, after my mother passed away, I... I just didn't want to stay there anymore. I thought this was as good a place as any for a woman to make her own way. Well... Now, this is... Do you like music? Who doesn't like music? you can take liberties, simply because I'm a businesswoman living alone. May I call upon you again? Good night. You may use this door. Please, may I call upon you again? Well, I... Tomorrow. All right. Good night. Good night. Has Waltz made to that mine since he met her? Five, maybe six. <laughs> Next. How long will it be? Oh. <laughs> well, uh, let me see. I I've got this gentleman here. And uh, one, two. Yeah, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> fellow. Oh, uh, well, him? Yeah. <laughs> Why, uh, <laughs> you see, uh, he, he's the fellow that, uh, that, uh, gave his place. not to come back unless I send for you. Everybody in town knows what's going on with him. And they're laughing at me. Stop acting like a child. Why did I do it? Why? Do what? Get up and run out of that barbershop like a scared rabbit, that's what. And all the time I wanted to... What are you so dressed up for? He said he'd be back today. 
And I don't want him to find you here, Pete. Please. You've seen a man ten times. How much longer is this going to go on? What difference does it make? Julia, don't see him anymore. You're a fool. Yeah, you're the smart one. Only not as smart as you thought you were. Not smart enough to get any of his money. Not smart enough to find out where his mine is. Pete, I know what I'm doing. Well, he'll be here any minute. You told him yet? Have you told him you're married? To somebody else's wife? Pete, I want you to leave. Somebody will tell him. Maybe somebody in the barber shop already told him. We'll find out. We'll find out you're after the same thing everybody else is after. Get out. Julia, I won't stand for you fooling around with that Dutchman. Let go of me. You're mussing my dress. Let loose of me. I'll send for you when I want you, Pete. When I want you. That's him. Go out the back door. Go on. This is it. He pays off tonight or so last night. When I come back, it'll be through the front door, Julia. about me, about us. No one would dare. Why? There's something I must tell you. What is it? I should have told you a long time ago, but I suppose I'd never thought it'd be necessary. Jacob, I'm married. I have been for five years. I couldn't lie to you, not now. I don't love my husband. No, I know I never have. All I want is to be free of him. You don't care for him? No. I love you, Jacob. What's his name? Pete. Pete Thomas. Will he give you a divorce? Divorce? For money, will he give you a divorce? Well, I... I don't know. Yeah. Here's two thousand dollars. We'll settle him and say five thousand dollars. Will that be enough for him? Perhaps. But he must sign a paper giving you a divorce. You see, I, I know about these things. I, I was married once myself. My wife divorced me. Took my daughter away from me. All because my wife didn't sign a paper. So he must sign that paper before he gets a penny of money. Now you understand that? Yes. Now will you make the arrangements? No, no, I'll do it myself. No. No, Jacob, I know I can. Good. When did he get back? Tonight. Yeah, tonight. What is it, Jacob? I'm going back to the mine tonight to get more money for us. Oh, I love you. I love you, Julia. And I want to marry you. Just you and I. Yes, Jacob. Just you and I. Hey! Everybody! I just saw the Dutchman. He woke up old man Parsons. Made him open up his store so he could get his grub. Then I saw him head for the corral. He's on his way back to the mine! I don't know! I don't know! Yes! Go after him! <laughs> Give me a drink, one for the road. You and your big mouth, you wreck our business. Well, we gotta find that mine. <laughs> hey. Hey. Hey, come on, wake up. Come on, wake up. What is it? I want you to get my burrows ready. Yeah. Oh, sure. Well, sir, you just got back. 
It ain't decent waking a man in the middle of the night. Not for Burroughs. Hey, do you know a, a Pete Thomas? I ain't no gossip. I mind my own business. I didn't ask you for any gossip. I asked you if you knew him. Well, we say howdy when we meet. I ain't seen him much lately. He ain't used no animals for a spell. How long has he been here? Shucks, I don't know. Three, four years, I guess. Ever since him and his wife came here from Milwaukee. Well, I'll start rounding up them dang barrels for you now. I don't see why you can't wait till morning, though. Hey there. Hey there, fella. Huh. Where'd he go? I wish you know. I can't seem to remember him going. Corral, I guess. Hey, fella. Hey, Pete. It's safe to go home now. The Dutchman's gone. <laughs> Well, Julia, did you have a nice evening? Did he pay off? Or do you have to see him just once more? Pete, I'm glad you're back. He gave me this, $2,000. And there'll be more. This is for you, Pete. And the rest that's coming. More than that, if you want it. I don't want his money. Do you understand? Let go of me, Pete, and listen. No, you listen to me for a change. You're through with him. And this time I'll make sure of it. Absolutely sure of it. What do you mean? When he comes back from the mine, he'll find me here, where I belong. I'll tell him how you played him for a sucker. That you like all the rest, only worse. You pretend to be decent. I'll tell him the whole rotten story, from beginning to end. The whole story, Pete? Yes, including the murder. It won't matter if you turn me in. It won't matter at all. Because when I'm through with him, I'll have a second one to my credit. Jacob Walsh. Pete. Pete, you've got to listen to me. Try to buy me off, would he? Well, he can't do it. Wait a minute. Whose idea was this? Did he think it up all by himself? No, he didn't. It was my idea. All mine. Well, I don't like those kind of ideas. I'll kill him before he gets out of town. Oh, Pete. Don't be silly. The only way I could get the money was to tell him you could be bought off. You're still my wife. Oh, Pete. I'm not lying to you. He thinks you'll give me a divorce for money. There was no other way of getting it. Don't you understand? <laughs> Julia, could it be that it isn't just his gold you're interested in? But you've been lying to me. Could that be? Don't be a fool. Answer me. Are you in love with him? Oh. Answer me. I've told you over and over again, all I want is his gold. For us. I don't want anything from him. Not even his mine? <laughs> Once I find out where it is, he'll be no problem to us. Julia, you aren't lying to me. No. I said you're on the way back to the mine, Dutchie. Yeah, when you leave. Oh, what's the matter, Dutchie? Well, come on, Walt. We're friends. You had enough now to kill a horse. Why don't you take your business somewhere else? Ain't they buying gold in Tucson or other places? Every time you leave Phoenix, you take half the town with you. Everybody trying to follow you and find out where that mine is. I'll bet there's a hundred of our customers waiting to follow you into that mountain right now. Take your gold and go to some other town. You ruin our business coming here. Get me a pencil and a piece of, piece of paper. Hey, 
There's Weaver's Needle. There's the runway. That's the ledge about 200 yards from the cactus marker. Mine's just below that. I see. I'm not coming back to Phoenix. What? Too many people following me out of town. Crowds getting bigger all the time, getting harder to lose on the trail. So we'll meet somewhere else. Doesn't make any difference where. But, Jacob, I thought... You can get a divorce anywhere. You can leave your husband the same way my wife left me. Is there anything wrong with that? No, only I... Th of course, if you didn't mean what you said about us. If you lied. Oh, no. I did mean it, Jacob. I did. There's no sense giving him any money. I've thought it over. Please, can't I go with you now? I'd tonight? never be able to lose those people on the trail if you were along with me. Jacob, you're so strange. Will you meet me at the mine, or won't you? Yes, of course I'll meet you. But it may take me two or three extra days because of the crowd that'll be following. You'll be there ahead of me. Yes, I'll be waiting at the mine for you. What did you want? What did you come back for? Oh, nothing. Just to see me again. Planning on running out of me, Julia? Oh, no, Pete. You know I wouldn't go without you. I do now. And I know something else. You're in love with him. You've been lying to me about that, too. But we're going to the mine together. You're going to be there when I kill him. You understand? Let me see that map again. There's Weaver's Needle. We're almost there. And I can hardly wait. This is it. This is the runway he told you about. Yes. What if he's here? He said it's taken two or three extra days. Anyway, he expects me. If he is here, you get him out where I can see him. Come on, Don. It's all right. He's not here. Look at it, Julia. Just look at it. Oh, I see why I always got back to town so soon. All he had to do was pick it up. Pete. It's worth millions. Bring the burrows down here. The runway we came down is the only way on or off this ledge. Well, go on. You were so anxious to be ready for him. Yeah. You're right. just wandered away. No, they were tied up. He's already here. He knows. Call to him. Get him out in the open. Go on. Jacob! 
where are you? Jacob! <laughs> want to bring him. He made me do it. Please, darling, help me. Quit before he finds out I'm gone. Oh, please, Jacob. <laughs> you fool! Ask him for water. Go on.
You want her? Take her! You can have her! Nobody wants you. From the beginning, it was her idea. I don't want your gold. I never did. If you want to take her, you can have it. Take her! You see, Jacob, I've gotten rid of him. I killed him for you. Oh, you know I wasn't lying to you. It's all over. It's just you and me now, Jacob. Remember? Just like you wanted it. Jacob, you love me. You said you did. We can be married now, just like you said. I wasn't lying to you, Jacob. He forced me to bring him with me. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Jacob, you've got to believe me. You've got to. I proved I loved you when I killed him. Oh, please. Please help me. Oh, Jacob, I want you. I want you. Oh, oh. All you wanted was my gold. Well, now you got it. You got it! back to 1912. Well, Arizona didn't become a state till then. But you got the right dope from those old newspapers. I remember for a fact it was in 1910, two years before we had a coroner's office. What are you two talking about? I'm checking up on a female skeleton found in superstition. Well, if Bill Bates was right, that skeleton was Julia Thomas's, the woman my grandfather was in love with. Oh, for... Say, if you don't stop harping about this waltz business, somebody's gonna swear out a lunacy complaint. But, Ray, I've got a lot to go on now. First, I found that rifle. Then I checked on the stories of the old folks up at the Pioneer's home. I even learned that an earthquake did hit superstition. It was on May 3rd, 1887. Who cares? Well, he does. I'm going back to that canyon where I found that rifle. Come on, fellas. Might as well clear off one of my tables. Be just my luck they bring him in on Sunday. Hi. Did you find your mine yet? Nope. But I'm on my way back to superstition right now. You better be careful. There's still a killer up there. I got nothing to lose except my life. The sky clouded up, and the wind tried to blow a scare into me as I made my way back to the treasure signs. Three days later, the clouds got out of the sky and into my brain. I got lost. I couldn't even find the canyon where I'd uncovered the old gun. Like an idiot, I fumbled in and out of one gorge after another, pushing along with no more sense or reason than if I'd been on a treadmill. I knew I had to locate the rock called Weaver's Needle before I could even start looking for the lost mine. Then, with sheer blind luck, I walked right into it. Here was a spot I'd found the gun, killed the rattlesnake, and I had my starting point. 
A short distance away, I found a cliff from which I could see the old military trail. Jacob Waltz had said that from his mine he could see the trail, but from the trail nobody could see the mine. I set out to prove he told the truth. Now, I'm a guy who gets dizzy just standing on a high curb. But even when the ground dropped out from under me like a deceitful friend, I kept scrambling along the cliffside, keeping the trail in sight. When you're sick with gold fever, you have no patience with caution. All you think about is getting your hooks into that glittering pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I followed the edge of that cliff, staying within view of the trail for the next three days. My fever began to go down as discouragement set in, and I was about ready to give up and go home when suddenly I came on a wide ledge. Gradually, it dawned on me that here, the trail was in sight, but that a mine couldn't be seen from below. Then I found the map, the strange map carved in a stone. This was something I hadn't expected. I got as excited as a poker player filling an inside straight flush. They looked like old Spanish markings, a sort of master map of the region. But the doodles didn't make any sense to me because I didn't know how to read them. Then I found that hole and realized it had been drilled into the rock for some reason. I didn't have any idea what the reason could be, but I picked up a stick and began probing to try and find out. I peered along the stick, but its direction pointed out nothing I hadn't seen before. Then I discovered, though it looked like just a single hole on the outside, there were actually several on the inside. My second look didn't lead any place either, but the third started bells ringing in my head. It pointed my eyes at a strange kind of peak, a startling rock formation with a window in its top. I felt as if Santa Claus had just climbed down my chimney. I began making tracks for that peak. As I clawed and climbed my way toward the window above, one thought kept repeating itself. Nobody, not Ray Coven, the sheriff, Bill Bates, nobody had ever mentioned the weird map cut in the rocks. Or well, this peak that had been pointed out by the stick in the hole. I'd discovered these things all by myself. What I knew was top secret, private knowledge for Barry Storm. I felt sure that at last, finally, I was on the express road to the Lost Dutchman, to my grandfather's fabulous mine, where I'd find lumps of gold piled up like rubble. I was so dreamy, I figured all I had to do was crawl through that window, and the mine was on the other side. But there wasn't any mine. There was nothing. I figured I'd crawl behind another eight ball. Then I realized this arch was man-made. It did add up to something. And when I saw my shadow on the valley floor, I knew this window was the key to the gold. My whole future was in that square of light below. I raced back to the wall map to fix its location in my mind, then get started on that last lap to fame and fortune. But something had changed. It wasn't like I'd left it. Looking for this? Ray, what are you doing here? Looking for you. Oh, for, Ray, I got it. I found a window cut in the rock. It's a sort of a light sign. It casts a shadow that points to a spot where the gold may be buried. And the spot is... Go on. Oh. Well, of course, it may not mean anything at all. I... What'd you come back for? Another murder. Drop your gun belt. You shut up fast when you thought you found something, didn't you? You don't want a partner, neither do I. You kill Buckley. I've been looking for that gold for 20 years, Storm. If anybody's gonna get it, it's gonna be me. You're right about that light sign. And some night, it's gonna show me where the gold is. Turn around. Start walking. We'll send a posse in after you in a couple of weeks. No murder here. Your bones will show you just died of a bad fall. Keep walking. Right to the end.
Seven weeks, victim number 21. Good thing Walter trailed you. You'd still be explaining this. Too bad he didn't get up in time to help you. But why were you having me tailed? I wasn't. I was after Ray. It wasn't any accident I sent Walter with you the first time. Ray had a funny habit of being out of the office whenever these murders happened. And he was always so fast locating the bodies. I stayed behind that first time after Colvin told me to go back. When I saw him raise his gun about to shoot you, I knew he was the killer. Then you've been using me for a clay pigeon. Kinda. I couldn't arrest my own deputy just on knowing. I had to prove Colvin was the murderer. That's why I was waiting for you to go in again. I knew if you got too close, he'd have to make a pass at you. Well, let's get going. I want to be out of here before dark. I'm not going with you. I got a date up there tonight. Mine little company? Won't it be kind of interesting watching a man just dig up $20 million? All I'm waiting for is that full moon. When it comes through that window, it'll light up the patch of ground where I'm to dig. That's all I'll need. Look at it. I'm standing right in the center of it. Right here. This is where I dig. My grandfather's gold. Twenty million bucks worth. It's moved. It was here, that square light. No, it's here. You hadn't figured on that, huh, Storm? You forgot the moon and Earth keep moving. At this rate, you're gonna have to dig up the whole mountain. Meet a bulldozer. That earthquake changed things, too. That's why Ray Coven never found the mine. That's why you'll never find it. That's right. If it is the moon that'll point out that gold, it'll only do it once a year. On the anniversary of the night the Peraldas made that sign. That's a catch. When was that sign made? What night? What hour? What moment? If I could figure that out, I'd hit the jackpot. And if you did, this county'd need a new sheriff, because I'd be right there digging with you. Come on, let's go. Well, that's the story, as far as I'm concerned. The whole biography of Superstition Mountain won't be finished till somebody takes that gold away from her. The treasure signs, the marker, the light sign, they're all genuine. Maybe you can figure out that strange map carved in the stone. I've got a hunch it holds the key to the fortune. Anyway, everything's all there in the mountain. And if you're interested, you might like to know that any citizen of the United States has the legal right to search for gold. And you don't have to pay anybody for the privilege. If you should find Superstition's treasure, the state of Arizona and the government of the United States will recognize your claim to it. Like I said at the beginning, if you'd like to pick up $20 million, I'll show you where to look. Well, I've shown you.